This is John W. Whitehead, author of A Government of Wolves, the Emerging American Police State, bringing you a message about the state of our nation. You'd have to be totally asleep like Rip Van Winkle if you're not seeing the patterns that are emerging in modern America. Four-year-old kids being leg shackled, handcuffed, guns pointed at them, taken to solitary confinement. 95-year-old men who just disagree with police getting shot, some killed. All across the country this is happening. In fact, in the first month and a half of 2015, there were more police shootings in this country than most of the major countries around the world, including Great Britain, China, and countries like that, believe it or not. So something's happening, and we have to be awake. But what we're hearing from many of our leaders today, whether they're religious, secular, whatever, obey, be compliant. And you know what the theory is that I have in? The only compliant citizen in this country is one that's going to be either face down or dead. In fact, this is what Franklin Graham, the heir to the Billy Graham empire, had to tell people across the country. It comes down to respect for authority and obedience. If a police officer tells you to stop, you stop. If a police officer tells you to put your hands in the air, you put your hands in the air. If a police officer tells you to lay down face first with your hands behind your back, you lay down face first with your hands behind your back. It's as simple as that. Even if you think the police officer is wrong, you obey. Amazingly, overwhelmingly, modern evangelicals across the country, so-called Christians, agreed with this statement. They showed so on Facebook, Twitter, things like that. But we're also getting the same message from police unions and stuff. Obey us. Lay down. If we say to do something, even if we're wrong or illegal, you do what we say. The problem arises when you do comply, you do the best you can, but the police officer, or the government agent, it doesn't have to be a police officer, it can be another government agent, the Department of Homeland Security, the FBI, because they do raid homes with local police. If they don't think you're complying enough, some things happen sometimes that people don't expect. For instance, take 15-year-old Jamar Nicholson, who was shot in the back by police after they spotted him standing next to a friend holding a toy gun. Then there was Martise Johnson, a 20-year-old college student. He was unarmed. He wanted to enter a bar. He was underage. He was turned away. They said he was polite. He wound up face down, face down the sidewalk, bloodied face, 10 stitches in his head. For what? He just disagreed. And then there was Christopher Lolly, who was tasered, arrested, and charged with trespassing because he was sitting on a park bench waiting to pick his children up for daycare. The police asked him who he was. He said, I don't have to tell you who I am. What happened? He got tasered and arrested for it. Then, there's a, then there was World War II veteran John Rahner, 95 years old. He was on a walker. He was a resident of an assisted living center. He was rushed by five police officers, one with a taser, one with a riot shield, one with a 12-gauge pump shotgun. Why? He was brandishing a shoehorn. He finally ended up getting killed. The police shot him. In fact, one website estimates that police kill on average three citizens a day in the United States. In 2014, it's estimated that 1,100 individuals were killed by police in America. That's 70 times more than other first world nations. So what's happening in this country right now? Uh, if you go back 20, 30 years ago, you saw none of this. You didn't see unarmed citizens getting shot. You didn't see old men getting shot in nursing homes. You didn't see kids getting tasered in schools. Something radical has happened in the last 20 to 30 years. Actually, when after 9-11, the passage of the Patriot Act, a lot of authority was given to police uh, and government agencies across the country. The Department of Homeland Security started handing out military equipment all across the country. And the actual handing out of equipment to police, uh, tanks, light vehicles, salt rifles, camouflage outfits to local police who look like the military now, has zoomed under Barack Obama. We're moving, in my opinion, we're transitioning into a totalitarian state right now. In fact, many historians say that extreme violence in a culture always is a transition period to a totalitarian state. So the question is, what should we do? Should we just roll over and go, praise the Lord, let's bring in a totalitarian state? Should we get out in the streets and get active? Should we just obey? Well, let's look at some historical figures. If Jesus Christ would have obeyed, there would have been no crucifixion. 
there would have been no uh, Christian religion. If Gandhi would just have obeyed, the Indians in India would not have broken with the British Empire and had their independence. If Martin Luther King had just rolled over and said, hmm, we just continue to be oppressed in the South and throughout the country, there would have been no civil rights movement. So go throughout history and you see all the great changes were brought about by people who said, I'm not just going to obey, I'm going to stand up for truth, nonviolently, getting into the streets and getting involved. So how can we change things in this country? If we're going to stop this transition to a totalitarian state, in my opinion, we're going to have to get very active locally. In fact, voting, in my opinion, means nothing at the federal level because it's run by corporate interest. When you vote for a president or candidate, you're voting for a corporation. If you get active in your local communities, you can change things. Local communities can start speaking back to Washington. They can start passing resolutions, laws, saying we're not going to allow these things to happen in our community. We're not going to take uh, the president's authority to, uh, under the National Defense Authorization Act, to send people into our community, uh, military, and arrest our people because he thinks they're an extremist, just because he thinks they're an extremist. So you can speak back, but ladies and gentlemen, the average American watches 150 hours of television a month. You're going to have to get up off of your hind ends and get active. And I'm telling people, give me one third of those hours for freedom. If we don't get active locally, in my opinion, freedom in this country is going to be gone in just a few years. For more information on the Rutherford Institute, visit us at www.rutherford.org.